Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another Vectorworks video and today I'm excited because I'm starting a brand new project and I thought I'd share with you the process that I go through when I start my new projects. So I'd like to show you how to import a DWG file correctly, how to work with a template that perhaps you've pre-created before and how to bring in things like photos and reference those in and make a nice front cover. So we're just going to go through these initial steps. But this is a series of videos that I'm hoping to make for this particular project as I move through the process. So if you're new around here, please make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. I'd love you to watch this whole series with me. Thanks for watching. Enjoy. Okay, everybody. So what we're going to do now is just bring up a new file. Okay, so when I import DWG or PDF or any kind of file into Vectorworks, I'll always like to start with the default blank file. Okay, so this has absolutely nothing in it. And this is good because we can kind of just see what's coming in and do a bit of a cleanup exercise. Now, here you can see I've got a few different files that I want to import. The first being this uh, DWG of the OS base. So I don't know whether you know this, but all you can do if you want to is drag and drop to start the import process, which is really nice. And this means that you can then easily kind of run through the options here. Now, when you're importing a DWG, the most important thing is to try to get the units correct. Um, in the UK, it's always going to be millimetres or metres, mainly metres for things like OS base and surveys, and millimetres often for other architectural drawings. Okay, so the few other options in here, um, if we did want to, we could actually georeference, but I'm not going to do that for this particular project. Georeferencing is not required. I could also reference the file. That would mean that if I was receiving lots of different files, I could basically keep updating the reference file. But again, I want to be able to edit the file, so I'm not going to reference it either. Let's go ahead and click Advanced. So here we can see in the Advanced settings, um, really there's not much reason to change from the recommended first option. What this basically does, it resets the internal origin to where the information lands. Okay, so that's fine. We'll leave that on that one. Uh, there's really not a lot to do on conversions. I know from experience that this is all 2D information anyway, but it will convert to 2D or 3D if it's there. And finally, we go to classes, and what we can do here is just add a prefix. So I'm just going to type in OS as the prefix for all these class names. Now, if we click OK and click OK on this dialog, it will start to import. And as you can see, it's imported pretty quickly. Okay, great. So the next thing that I would like to do is just simply click on my scale of my viewing and just change that to something appropriate. So let's go to 1250, click OK. And you can see basically it's come in and it all looks good. Uh, that's pretty heavy line weight there. That's fine. I'll be able to kind of edit this and sort some of these issues out in a moment. Let's just drop that down to 0.5. Okay, so we've imported our DWG, it's all looking good, and I just want to draw your attention to the classes. You'll notice the fact that we added the prefix means that all of the classes are prefixed with OS base, for example, so that's really, really nice. By the way, you can right click and turn off the hierarchy if you just want to display the classes normally, uh, but I think it's actually quite helpful to display those with the hierarchy so I can hide them all away. Another tool that I just want to draw your attention to is a really nice tool uh, called the stake object. Now this is very useful in Architect in the site planning palette. And what this allows you to do is go up into the options and you can do lots of different things with this, but all I'm really trying to show you now is you can use it to set coordinate points. Uh, so to do this, I like to go for circle cross as style, label reference, I'm gonna to change to X and Y. I'm also going to just set the coordinate units to be meters, which are the units of the file. And what you're going to notice is, if I click here now, can you see that the coordinate is exactly the coordinate you see here, and also this grid line here. So this is extremely nice in that basically, if you, if you needed to, you can kind of plot the coordinates of uh, the house or the site or whatever. So this has been very useful for me on a number of occasions when I've needed to give setting out coordinates for different projects. And I really encourage you to have a look at the stake tool. Now there's loads of really nice 3D functionality and it's one of the ways you can actually create terrain models, uh, but we won't be doing that right now in this particular video. Okay, good. Okay, so what I'm actually gonna do for this particular project is select all of this information and I'm actually gonna copy it 
And because in this particular project, I'm not too worried about the geographical origin at this stage, I'm going to go over to my design layers, go to my OS base plan, and I'm just going to re-center it around my internal origin. So I wouldn't recommend this for big projects where you need to coordinate with other consultants, but for a small domestic job, this is honestly going to be fine for me now. And I'm just going to paste in that uh, OS base. And again, let's change that scale to 1 to 1250. Okay, good. So you can see now uh, the center of my site is right on my page, which is excellent. And the coordinates are clearly going to be incorrect at this stage, but I can leave them there. And if I do want to, I can just turn those off for now. And I think the only thing that I'll actually just pop back on is the border there and just like give that a see through fill. I might also decide actually to turn on the things like the scale bars and so on as well. Um, so to do that, I'm going to click the visibility tool one more time and I'm going to actually hold down my shortcut, which is number seven, just to turn those classes on. Now, this is a really nice tool. What you're going to notice is it only turns those classes on temporarily. OK, so that's fantastic. But just to clarify, you can also turn things off with that as well. Can you see? So I can kind of turn off various classes to turn back on. I hold seven down and just click uh, a single click to bring them back again. Let's just turn all of those classes back on. There we go. Fantastic. OK, so what I might do with the scale bar and the copyright symbol is maybe just move that to a new class. Let's just move that to OS main. And that would mean now I can turn off the other information that I didn't want to see right now. Excellent. OK, so we basically set up with our OS base ready to go. I think we'll beef up the line weight there a little bit now. OK, so my next stage would be to go ahead and create some viewports. So I'm just simply going to go create viewport and select immediately from my template my sheet. Now, with my template, I've already got all of these sheets loaded in. Um, and basically, they're blank sheets at this stage. So if I just go to location plan, you'll see it immediately lands on the drawing. And all I've really got is a north point, um, a couple of general notes, and a title block, intelligent title block, and the name of the location plan. So I don't need the annotation there. Let's just double click and delete that one for now. That'll do. Um, so this drawing is almost ready to go. I might make a few little tweaks and changes, but that's fine. So now I can simply copy the viewport, copy, go down to my sheets, go down to my block plan sheet, right click, paste in place. Uh, have I got it? Yeah, paste in place. Great command to add as a right click. Uh, learn the shortcut, but if you don't have this in your right click, I recommend you add it by editing your workspace. And then all I need to do here is blow this up to block plan size, 500 scale. And then, of course, uh, as it gets larger, you're going to want to double click and go into crop mode. So with the crop mode, this is a really good little tip. Um, let's crop it around the site. OK, so that's good. And let's recenter this on the middle of the drawing. So I just click over here onto the grid and type in zero, tab zero. So that recenters that bit. Now what I want to do, though, is I just want to show the crop so it's visible. But I also want to get my scale bar back as well. So the way to do that is uh, duplicate the viewport, double click and edit the crop. OK, and all I need to do now let, is simply move my little crop box just conveniently around the scale element here. That's absolutely fine. And exit crop. So that's kind of nice. I can just have that on the bottom of the page. And I don't need to have the crop visible on that particular one. So it all looks really good. Excellent. So there's two drawings done. Um, finally, let's move on to the site plan. I will copy both of those. Go to my site plan and paste in place again. And now we move up to, if you like, 200 scale. OK, so I'm really going to need to get in and edit that crop a bit tighter. So let's start off making it um, just around the bit where the project is going to occur. So I think really, let's see how that looks. That might be enough. Just kind of want to make sure it fits on my paper, of course. And that looks really good. OK, I might, I might tighten up that crop in a moment. And little things like this, look, where, the, where the, uh, you know, the title block gets in the way, I'm just going to use the clip tool 
Okay, and I'll hold the B key down just so I can see uh, my title block. And I'm just basically going to clip out that little section there using the clip tool, and then out we go. Okay, of course, this will also need to be increased in size to 1 to 200 scale. Um, and that looks a bit a bit big at that scale. So probably I'll leave that for now and put my own scale bar on in a moment. Okay, so let's save our file. We've already created three drawings in a matter of moments. So the final thing just on this little section would be to add a nice photo. Uh, so to do this, I'm just going to go into my project folder, go down to my photos, my site photos here. And let's just sort of see if we can choose a nice photo quickly, um, rapidly here, just for the project. So a couple of sort of context shots of the site that kind of represents the site itself. Maybe this one, for example, just shows that it's a bit of an overgrown mess. Let's click and drag that photo in, drag and drop, and start importing. Okay, great. Now, there's a couple of nice little effects we can do. So I'm just going to send that to the back and push that to there, to that point there. And finally, I'm just going to go on to Opacity, Fill Opacity, and just fade that down. And while I'm at it, I might also try Image Effects. Okay, and this is quite nice, where you can do things like just soften those edges, just to create a slightly sort of more artistic effect, and maybe uh, adjust things like the exposure and so on as well. If I really want to, I could even go into more of a kind of sepia tone as well. That might be quite fun. This is just really to show you what I tend to do. Just to use um, a sort of picture of the site, just kind of as a front cover. Excellent. So we'll save what we've done in this section of the video, and we'll have a look at the next section shortly. Thanks for watching.